wide world of sports continues. That I can remember, I don't think I've seen the guy walk a step in this race. So there's one thing you can count on when you're out there, is that Dave Scott is not going to die, which means that as a, someone who's going to compete against him, I have to know that I have to go faster, that I'm going to push a little bit harder, and that when it gets tough for me, I'm going to go beyond that one or two or three or ten steps until I get to a point where hopefully the guy's behind me and he's not gaining time on me. He's had a fabulous year. But he'd throw away all those victories he had throughout January to October if he could just win the Ironman race. And I think he feels that pressure. They stayed together for the first two miles through town. And then heading out into the lava fields with temperatures in the high 90s and the asphalt a blistering 120 degrees, Scott had let Allen go. By seven miles, Mark Allen had opened up a four-minute lead. Even days before, the two men had very different philosophies about marathon strategy. The race doesn't really start until you're about 10 miles into that run. The race is going to be won by somebody who can just hammer all the way through that run. Mark Allen felt he had to hammer. And in miles 8, 9, and 10, he added 5 to 10 seconds per mile to his lead. Endurance athletes become skilled at intercepting the body's messages to the brain. Mark Allen is one of the best at ignoring his own distress signal. If you tell your body something long enough, it believes you. But from the outside, your opponents see what you won't admit. And when Scott and Allen got a good long look at each other near the turnaround, what Dave Scott saw gave him inspiration. Scott knew that he was feeling strong. And he sensed that Mark Allen's form was deteriorating. marathon Dave Scott took inventory. Ten miles to go. He had planned to start racing in earnest here. Four and a half minutes down on Allen, he began the chase. mile Scott took back 10 seconds from Allen and in the next 40 seconds Mark Allen was approaching the wall and the next water stop was irresistible fire in his eyes, still thinking, still planning. One guy, he's walking up there. He's walking, Dave. Let's go.
four miles to go. Dave Scott slips by a walking Mark Allen under cover of a pace car. Mark Allen never sees him. It was a calculated move by Scott, just in case Allen was capable of taking an eight count on the cone of blacktop and then duking it out again in the final mile. But Allen, who ran to victory in Dallas and France and Japan and Australia, Allen, the man on the cereal box, Mr. Triathlon, now knew that he was back in the Ironman, back on Dave Scott's turf. The final four miles would give Mark more than enough time to wonder why. Why was he invincible around the world, everywhere, everywhere except here, where Dave Scott was king of the long, hot road. After 3.30 in the afternoon, the equivalent of a full eight-hour working day plus a coffee break since the start, when Dave Scott came into the home stretch, remarkably fresh. Fresh enough to be his own cheerleader as he coasted to the finish line for his amazing sixth victory in the Bud Light Ironman Triathlon World Championship. His time, eight hours, 34 minutes, 13 and 2 ten seconds. Considerably short of his record for the course, but victory was as sweet as ever. Mark Allen would make it in second place, about 11 minutes behind Scott, and about seven minutes ahead of Greg Stewart, who finished third. Mike Peak was fourth, and Ken Gla, who led for a while, was fifth. But Scott... Mark looked okay as he came to the finish, but he really wasn't. Taken to the medical tent, he was pumped with three liters of glucose solution. He didn't respond. He had to be rushed to the hospital, where he was found to be severely dehydrated and bleeding internally. Mark Allen would return to race another day. But on this particular day, he had not only given his all, he had given more than he had to give. 